now it's interesting mm -hmm. that one of their big problems mm -hmm. was uh, the 55 to 65 year old lot that mm -hmm. were there they're under the Republican plan <clears throat> their prices the cost of their insurance was going to escalate wouldn't have been interesting if they had just said okay we'll lower Medicare to 55 and that would have taken care of all that mm -hmm. so I want to turn to Congress member Peter Welch the Democrat from Vermont uh, his remarks earlier this month during the Energy and Commerce Committee's markup of the American Health Care Act the Republican plan you know, there's been a lot of discussion about the fact that this bill has just appeared yesterday and that it was being hidden. Was it really being hidden from Democrats in America, or was it being hidden from your Freedom Caucus? They say that this bill is a phony repeal of Obamacare. And you want to know something? They're right, because there is a lot of plagiarism in this bill. The insurance reforms that all of you voted against you're now bragging you're keeping. The subsidies that you say are horrible, you have changed from a direct subsidy that actually provided meaningful access to health care to on the cheap tax credits that don't do the job. But that's an entitlement that you say you're against. The mandate, you've decried the mandate, but what you've done is imposed a 30 percent penalty and the revenues don't go to the health care program. The revenues go to the insurance companies. What is going on here? Gentlemen's time. So that is Vermont Congress member Peter Welch, who, together with Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont, says they will both introduce legislation for single payer. Um, so if you could respond to what he said and then talk about what their plan is and your thoughts on it. Well, the Republican plan, which was defeated, was just a meaner version of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, unfortunately, it, uh, both of those acts have left the private insurance industry in the center of the health care system. And we actually need to get the private health insurance industry out. Their overhead and profits and the overhead that they impose on doctors and hospitals are, co are costing us uh, 500 billion dollars annually that we do not need to be spending, $500 billion annually that we could save through a single-payer program, use that money to cover the 26 million Americans who now have no coverage, uh, and then to improve the coverage of insured Americans who often have uh, insurance they can't afford to use because of the high co-payments, the high deductibles. Now, the deductibles and co-payments, that's a problem that predated Obamacare, but Obamacare failed to fix, and a single payer could eliminate that problem, as it has done in other countries. But how would you propose to get from here to there, given the reality that the Republicans have an even larger now base of support in, in Congress? They control all the houses, and, and now they'll soon have a much more conservative Supreme Court. Uh, how would you propose to get from where we are there to single payer? Okay. Well, we have another election in 21 months. We have another presidential election in less than four years. Uh, things can change, and uh, so we need to be thinking ahead. We've already seen a tremendous amount of change just from people getting out to town hall meetings, getting out on the streets, calling their congressmen. Uh, who would have known, uh, you know, a few months ago that the Republicans would would uh, not be able to to repeal Obamacare. You know, they're not, they haven't been able to do it largely because there's been pressure from the electorate on the purple state senators and uh, congressmen. So uh, people need to be out there in the streets. They need to be contacting their congressmen. They need to be demonstrating, educating, and preparing for the day when we really can get single payer, which may be sooner than you think. So we keep throwing around mm -hmm. that word single payer. Mm -hmm. Explain exactly what you mean. And is the uh, Sanders plan, it's just been uh, discussed this weekend, to go right to this? What would be the system in the United States? Well, we haven't seen the Sanders bill yet, but the sort of things that Sanders and uh, congressmen uh, have been putting forward, like Congressman John Conyers, H.R. 676, would be, you know, everyone just pays their taxes, and everyone is automatically eligible for a program like Medicare, only it would have no copayments, no deductibles for covered services, no participation by the private health insurance industry. So a, a expanded and improved Medicare, expanded to everyone, improved so it doesn't have the kind of gaps in uncovered services that do 
you know, do exist in the current Medicare program. Uh, we've been advocating that plan for decades. Frankly, uh, Congressman Conyers and Senator Sanders have as well. And uh, I'm not sure what piece of legislation, what the legislation is going to look like that gets introduced in the next few days by Welsh and Sanders. Um, but uh, certainly over the uh, long term, what we would need to be thinking. To the well, the insurance companies would have no role in an efficient Medicare for All program. Uh, some of these insurance companies have overhead of 20 percent, meaning that uh, you give them a dollar in premiums and only 80 cents ever goes to a doctor or a hospital or a drug company. 20 cents stays right there with the insurance company for their overhead and profit. You have to compare that to traditional Medicare, where the overhead is 2 to 3 percent. So uh, when you add up all of the administrative costs that insurance companies have, the administrative costs they impose on doctors like me and hospitals to try to send bills to multiple payers, uh, we're talking about potential savings of four to five hundred billion dollars annually. That's the money we need to give universal health care to everyone. And, and where do the various uh, stakeholders in the, in the industry, for instance, I know that the hospitals were very much opposed to the current uh, legislation that the Republicans were pushing for, but where would the doctors and the, and the hospitals and the pharmaceuticals and all these others stand uh, in, the, in, a, in a battle over uh, a Medicare for all? Okay. Well, in the last battle around the Republican bill, there were no doctors' groups, no real doctors' groups supporting the bill. Every Everyone opposed it. Certainly, nursing groups and hospitals were opposing it, too. Um, in a s battle for single payer, things might line up a little different in that the insurance industry and the pharmaceutical industry will be totally and completely opposed to single payer. Uh, for the insurance industry, health insurance industry, it's a life or death battle, and we can expect them to use all of their lobbying clout to try to prevent it. Big Pharma hasn't been very happy in single payer systems because in single payer systems, they they're forced to lower their prices. In fact, to about half of what people in the United States pay. And indeed, a single-payer system, by lowering those pharmaceutical prices, would save another $100 billion that we could use uh, to cover people. So um, pharma's going to be opposed. Insurance industry, the most opposed, because it's life and death for them. So, Rince Priebus, the chief of mm -hmm. staff, former head of their RNC, mm -hmm. um, said this weekend, Democrats, bring your proposals to us now. Um, mm -hmm. We're seeing a kind of civil war in the Republican Party. Will we see the same in the Democratic Party? Uh, I'm doubtful about that. Uh, certainly, at this moment, uh, the Democrats, as an opposition party, tend to be much tend to unify uh, when they're actually running things. Uh, it, the divisions come out much more. Well, Bernie Sanders is part mm -hmm. of the leadership. So, are you saying yeah. that the leadership might actually endorse a Medicare for All proposal? And what does a public mm -hmm. option proposal mean, a pre uh, Medicare for okay. All proposal? Well, the way the leadership can be brought to endorse single payer is by us, the constituents. Uh, out there on the streets, calling them up, pressuring them in all the ways we have, saying, we want single-payer. That's what will bring the full Democratic leadership around on this. Um, public option, you know, public option would be a small step that would ease some of the pain. It would mean that if, when you were on the exchange buying things, one of your options would be to pay money and buy into <coughs> Medicare. But, you know, most Americans do not get their care through the exchange. Uh, and the public option really doesn't generate those massive administrative uh, savings that we need in order to be afford, able to afford health care for everyone. Dr. Steffi Wilhandler, we want to thank you so much for being with us. Professor at CUNY Hunter College, primary care physician, lecturer at Harvard Medical School, co-founder of Physicians for a National Health Program. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we go to London to talk about what's happening right now in Iraq. Is it possible that the largest strike uh, just occurred, uh, an airstrike in Mosul since the U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003. Stay with us.